Hi guys, this is the lady and this is going to be my this is going to be my hot topic uh, for Thursday and that is corporal punishment and how you guys and I feel about that. Do you agree with it? I was watching um, the talk and they showed this young this young kid. Uh, this little boy, they showed this little boy who was, I think, five years old, and um, he was spitting and hitting on some of his classmates, and um, they were going to spank him with a paddle. U.S. Um, they wanted to know how we felt about that. And growing up in the 60s, okay, um, old school, and I it was, also, it was definitely something that our parents believed in. And I grew up thinking that was the norm. Oh. Let, me, let me just go back and say my neighborhood was predominantly, no, not predominantly, my neighborhood was all black. And, um, and all of the, the neighbors, if they saw you doing something you shouldn't be doing, they will correct you themselves. That was allowed. The village, it takes a village to raise children. Well, we were in that village, okay, when I was growing up. 1962 to 1980, um, I was in, in an all-black neighborhood. I pretty much went to an all-black school. Um, I think the only white person we came in contact with was our vocational uh, teacher and so yeah when we were growing up not only were our, not only did our parents and our neighbors uh, have permission to correct us our teachers also disciplined us I remember standing oh gosh it was middle school I was in middle I was in middle school and um, one of our math teachers used to have this black, long black, well, about this long, black rubbery thing that she would hit us with if we didn't know our timetable. She would line us up uh, outside of her classroom, and she would call out a timetable, four times ten. And if you didn't know that answer, like, pronto, you would get that strap, what she used, that black strap, she would, you hold your hands out and she would hit your hands with that black strap and you would go to the end of the line until you get that, uh, get a, the answer correctly. And it wouldn't be the same problem, okay? So you never know what she's going to call out. So you had to study. And if you didn't study and, you know, do your homework or uh, know your, your math, your timetables, or whatever it was that she wanted, uh, that she called out that day, you got a strapping that in your hand, and and you if you miss like three or four times, your hands like on fire, okay, uh, because you you got three three hits with her, and so that's how it was for us growing up, okay. Our parents, you know, they took switches, and and that was the worst. To me, that was the worst whipping. You could we call it whippings um, that you could get because not only were you you knew you were going to get a whipping, um, but you had to go and pick the switch <laughs> that they were going to whoop you with. Okay, and um, and you couldn't go out there and get a, a switch that was going to break. Okay, because then if they had to go and get it. It was going to be even more lashes for you. So we we got, you know, disciplined with switches and belts and straps and all kinds. But that wasn't their first defense, okay? That wasn't uh, when you did something the first time, that wasn't what you got. You didn't get those things unless they had to continuously repeat themselves. My, my parents were not about to continuously talk to us. Um... Talking was the first thing they did. Okay, you did something wrong. Let's talk about it. Figure out what you did wrong so you don't do it again. And then if you did it again, then your punishment 
was different than that talking to because obviously that talking to didn't work. The, you know, if you're one of those kids that just don't get it, you know, and you're just going to keep trying the parents, then the discipline escalated. So I do, uh, I'm just going to say, I do believe there the incorporal punishment, incorporal punishment, uh, because there are times when talking isn't enough. Many, uh, I've been in schools as a volunteer, and these children today are just disciplined. They're just not disciplined. And some of these kids that's in these schools are very rude and disrespectful and 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 just not not this uh there's just so many so much talking you can do to these kids uh and it's just not getting through to them and, and that's because they know that there's no consequences for them being disrespectful and rude and so you know there there should be some kind of corporal punishment for these kids who continuously uh, display this kind of behavior. Yeah. Uh, you're hearing stories about police officers mishandling and uh, mishandling these children uh, or these teenagers uh, by tossing them around in the schools and all that kind wow. of stuff. And and don't think I'm for that. I mean, that's definitely out of control. But at the same time, it's because it's probably the same students that had that talking, you know, um, the principal has talked to them, the teachers have talked to them, the, the, they've talked to the parents and tried to get them to talk to them, and nothing is working, and you at that frustration level where, what do you do with these children? What do you do with these kids that's disrupting your class, that's rude and disrespectful? Unfortunately, you see these uh, police officers or security officers coming in and trying to handle that kind of student. Grew up, um, we grew up knowing, you know, we grew up knowing that uh, if anything, if we got into trouble and we did something, and especially at school, okay, my parents, uh, during that time, uh, our parents didn't have the luxury to take off work and uh, take off work and, and leave work without losing pay. If they took off work, if they took off work, they lost wages. And so, you know, for us to be at school cutting up and acting a fool and my parents had to leave work because I was at school cutting up. Oh, you, you already. OK. <laughs> no, Mary Catherine and H&L, they didn't play. That. OK, they're not going to lose wages to come up to our school because we don't know how to act. <clears throat> Back in the day, that was uh, the thing that our parents would always say, know how to act, act as if you had some home training. And um, and the, and we were trained, okay? We were trained to be respectful to our our um, teachers. We were told, we were taught to be respectful to our parents, there were no cursing in front of our parents, no drinking in front of smoking, none of that, okay? We were not allowed to do any of that growing up. And our elders, we were we were respectful to our elders. Children back then were told to be seen, not heard. So when, when our parents were talking, there was none of this going back and forth, okay? None of that. You, you don't speak until they stop talking and they give you like give you permission to say what you have to say and, and you better say it in a respectful tone even if you were angry okay even if you were correct and they were wrong you don't disrespect them and so today it just seems like the children today are total totally um without any kind of discipline, uh, disciplinary actions. There are no disciplinary actions for what they do. Um, I know a lot of people think that talking is is going to going to work and it, it does. It does work for some children. Taking I have two kids. 
um, a, a son and a daughter. My son, it took more than talking to get him to straighten up, okay? My daughter, all you have to do is be angry with her, <laughs> okay? And she's in tears. All you have to do is just to show that you're disappointed in something she did. And she's you in tears. You just have to know the children that you're dealing with and what works for them. Not all children needs to be disciplined uh, with a paddle, okay? Some of them you can talk to. But then there are some that needs a little, uh, what we call, uh, hands-on learning. Yes. In their minds, they were teaching us how to be respectful individuals, um, to know that there were consequences for our actions, so that, my, as my parents would say, we're teaching you so that the system won't have to. The system was the police, okay? Uh, the system was the schools. Uh, the systems were, you know, um, jail. They were teaching us to be respectful and, and, and good citizens so those institutions wouldn't see us, um, wouldn't have to discipline us, okay? But there is a difference in discipline and uh, abuse, okay? Um, and I think that's another topic we should talk about, and I'll talk about that in my next um, hot topic section, discipline and abuse, because that's just a whole nother video we need to get into. When I believe in corporal punishment because I'm a benefactor of it. Um, that was just part of our culture when we were growing up. Uh, everybody I knew on the block, everybody in my neighborhood, uh, parents believed in corporal punishment, and that was just, you know, the way it was. Uh, I know there are other cultures out there who don't believe in, you know, putting hands on children, and that's fine. That's that's the way you were raised. That's your culture. But in our, in our culture, uh, during our time as growing up in the 60s, 70s, and the 80s, that's what we did. And um, so let me know what you guys think uh, about corporal punishment. I mean, uh, in my opinion, no two people, I mean, it, there's no right or wrong answer. Uh, some people are going to see it as abuse. Some people are going to see it as that's the way it was. That's the way we, we were raised, and that's the way we raise our children, and that's the way we're going to continue to raise our children. That's just the way it is. It's not, um, I don't think it's something that any... Uh, we're all going to agree with. So that's my <laughs> that's my take on corporal punishment and, you know, how I feel about it and the, my experience with it. So um, let me know what you guys think about this corporal punishment and uh, I'll talk to you guys on the next hot topic. This is the lady signing off for now. Be blessed and a blessing. Bye-bye.